I plan to have uh, continuously both regular classes as well as extra classes for you people. Uh, wherein uh, today we do have uh, one more faculty with us uh, from the thermal department uh, side in the mechanical department. It's Professor uh, Vinod C. Thodkari, sir. He's uh, almost having 20 years of experience in the teaching. He was earlier with Malayo College and then uh, in Kasti College. Presently, uh, he's with us in the department and he's from the uh, thermal specialization. So with his advantage of his specialization, I requested him to deal with the radiation chapter to you people. So I request all of you to give your cooperation and uh, so learn. Uh, so whatever the expertise is there from Todkari sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Over to, uh, over to you, Todkari sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and sir. just I would like to tell uh, all of you. Uh, we'll be having the regular classes also, wherein I'll be dealing with convection and remaining part, okay? Sir, we'll be dealing with radiation. Thank you once again. Uh, sir, uh, permit me to leave the class. Yes, sir, please. Sir. Uh -huh. Okay, 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 sir. okay. Thank, you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll start now. All of you, can you see the screen? So I will be dealing with heat transfer. And uh, to be more specific, we will be discussing about radiation. Chitragar sir has already covered conduction and convection. You know, all of you know that there are three modes of heat transfer. They are conduction, convection, and radiation. The basic difference is that conduction and convection requires medium, whereas radiation doesn't require medium. Whatever energy we are receiving from sun, that is because of radiation. And in between sun to earth, there is no, like, there is vacuum. So there is no media present. Still, we are receiving the radiation. So that energy we are receiving is because of radiation. So before starting any topic, let us discuss what are the applications. Uh, in our day-to-day -day life, we know many applications of conduction, convection, and radiation. So we'll discuss about applications of radiation. Radiation is required in space heat exchanger. You know that in space, there is no media. There will be a heat exchanger. Uh, if you take example of PSLV, different cooling systems will be there. Now that electronic systems need to be cooled. So they are cooled with the help of heat exchanger. Now for heat exchanger, we'll be using a fluid. And to cool that fluid, heat has to be rejected to vacuum. Now, when heat has to be rejected to vacuum, that heat transfer will be exclusively because of radiation. Because in vacuum, there will not be any conduction. In vacuum, there will not be any convection. Because for conduction as well as convection, we need media. For radiation, we doesn't require any medium. So when we talk about space heat exchanger, the fluid will get cooled only because of radiation. Undoubtedly, there will be conduction. On this heat exchanger, there will be fins. And in that fin, heat transfer will be through conduction. But from that fin to vacuum, the heat transfer will be because of radiation. So the first application where radiation is exclusively used is space heat exchangers. Then design of boilers. In boilers, we are having radiant superheaters. So radiant means the heat losses are because of radiation. The heat transfer is because of radiation. Then in design of furnaces, boiler furnaces or any kind of furnaces where high temperatures are there. See in like layman language, we say that at radiation occurs at high temperatures, right? But it is not true. Even at uh, very low temperatures, radiation and convection both are present. Only thing is depend like which thing is dominant. So if there is media, heat transfer will be by two mechanisms. One is convection and one is radiation. If there is no media, heat transfer will be exclusively because of radiation. So design of furnaces are there. Then design of combustion chambers. In combustion chamber, we are having again high temperatures and heat transfer is because of radiation. Now the main advantage is solar radiation. Whatever energy, why we are living, we are living because of solar radiation. In fact, uh, even if you think about food, that photosynthesis, the plants require solar energy 
to do the photosynthesis process there are plenty of applications one lecture exclusively we can dedicate to what are the applications of radiation but i am just uh, uh, confining it i am telling it within minimum words i am just telling you the captions right the next application where radiation is required is cancer treatment if you go to oncologist uh, they use chemotherapy right in that chemotherapy radiation is used to kill the cancer cells okay so these are the applications where some of the applications where radiation is used now let us start with the basic concepts of radiation all surfaces emit thermal radiations all surfaces solid surfaces liquid surfaces as well as gaseous surfaces at specific wavelength right they emit thermal radiations but we will not deal with gases because the cases are different the major where these radiations occur in is in solid surfaces and liquid surfaces so we will talk only about solid surfaces and liquid surfaces right they emit radiation at what temperature they emit radiation they emit radiations at all temperatures except at 0 kelvin at 0 kelvin you might be knowing the concept of absolute zero absolute zero means 0 kelvin 0 kelvin means minus 273.15 degree celsius so if we can produce a temperature of minus 273.15 degree celsius there will not be any radiation but you know that uh, till now it is not achievable one more thing is there which is not related with this but it is related to ic engines if we can produce 0 kelvin we can produce an engine having 100% efficiency because 0 kelvin the q2 will be zero there will not be any heat rejected anyway that is not a part of our discussion what we are discussing is that all solid and liquid surfaces emits radiations at all temperatures now the process of radiation the process of emission of this radiant energy is governed by stefan boltzmann's law which states that the total radiant power emitted from a surface is proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature now in 11th standard already you have studied this stefan boltzmann's law what i want to highlight is just remember that this emissive power is directly proportional to fourth power of the absolute temperature the word absolute is very important in conduction and convection we deal only with temperatures those temperatures are generally maybe in degree celsius or degree kelvin it will not hamper why it will not hamper because in conduction and convection we deal with delta t delta t is the change in temperature let's say the temperature has changed from 40 degree celsius to 50 degree celsius so what is delta t delta t is 10 even if i take these values in kelvin the temperature difference will be 10 so in conduction and convection it doesn't matter where you whether you take temperatures in celsius or kelvin but as far as radiation is concerned we have to take temperatures in kelvin because radiation is governed by stefan boltzmann's law which states that the emissive power of a black surface is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature so here the word is absolute temperature so we have to take temperatures in kelvin now this is the statement of stefan boltzmann's law which we have studied that it states that the emissive power of a black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature so e is proportional to t raised to 4 is the emissive power that is proportional to t raised to 4 now if we can replace that proportionality sign by a constant and that constant is sigma so the equation becomes e is equal to sigma into t raised to 4 that sigma is called as stefan boltzmann's constant stefan and boltzmann were different scientist one was the student of other one did experimentation and one did analytical studies and both came across the same conclusion that's why this law is called as stefan boltzmann's law it is invented by stefan as well as boltzmann right now e is equal to sigma into t raised to 4 e is the emissive power the rate of emission of radiant flux so e is nothing but qb upon a why i am using qb b is the suffix for black body so qb upon a is equal to sigma t raised to 4 so i can write qb is equal to sigma a t raised to 4 now this equation qb is equal to sigma a t raised to 4 is exclusively for black body now if i want to use equation if i want to apply the equation for any general body 
i have to take into consideration emissivity that we'll discuss later on in this lecture itself after 5 minutes we'll discuss what is emissivity so for general bodies the equation is q is equal to epsilon sigma a t raised to 4 if you want to calculate heat transfer between two bodies at temperatures t1 and t2 this final equation will be q is equal to epsilon sigma a t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 where t1 is the absolute temperature of first body and t2 is the absolute temperature of second body so is this equation clear to all of you this equation is the basic equation for radiation like we say no that in conduction conduction is governed by fourier's law convection is governed by newton's law of cooling similarly radiation is governed by stefan boltzmann's law this law states that q is equal to epsilon sigma a t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 where q is the heat loss rate of heat loss by radiation epsilon is the emissivity sigma is the stefan boltzmann's constant the value of sigma is 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 watts per meter square kelvin raised to 4 it is easy to remember this value it is in sequence 5 6 7 8 if you look at the figure it is 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watts per meter square kelvin raised to 4 so i think it is clear to you q is the rate of heat loss by radiation epsilon is the emissivity sigma is the stefan boltzmann's constant a is the area let's say if you take a spherical ball the surface area of that spherical ball will be 4 pi r square if you take a wall the surface area of the wall will be length of the wall into height of the wall if you are considering both sides of the wall it will be 2 into length into height if you are taking a cylinder the surface area of cylinder will be 2 pi r l so a is the area through which radiation heat loss is taking place and t1 and t2 are the absolute temperatures absolute temperatures means temperatures in kelvin i think it is clear to you so stefan boltzmann's law states that the emissive power of a perfectly black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature and the mathematical form we have to deal with the mathematical form see there are only four laws in radiation in this lecture we'll be covering those four laws the most important law is this stefan boltzmann's law the mathematical form of this law is q is equal to epsilon sigma a t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 where epsilon is the emissivity sigma is constant its value is 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 a is the area let's call that a is the surface area and t1 and t2 are absolute temperatures in kelvin now this already i have explained that stefan and boltzmann both were from austria both were physician and they developed this law now the next important concept is the concept of black body now you might be knowing that black body is a hypothetical body it is not a body in existence it is an imaginary body black body is the body having maximum emissive power so there are two concepts of black body one what is uh, known for a layman also is that black body is the body which absorbs all incident radiations black body is the body which absorbs all incident radiations and one more important concept is there that black body is the body which emits radiation at the maximum intensity possible for every wavelength for every wavelength if you compare a real body or any gray body or a general body with black body the emissive power or the radiations emitted will be always maximum for black body irrespective of your spectrum irrespective of the wavelength the word black has nothing to do with the color right black body is the body which absorbs all incident radiations that is called as black body even sun is an example of black body ice is an example of black body the absorptivity of ice is 0.96 so ice is also an example of black body lamp black platinum black there are plenty of examples about black body just make one thing that uh, black body just remember that the word black has nothing to do with color actually it is called as black because it absorbs it absorbs all incident radiation that's why it is called as black body now this this concept is also important now as far as our syllabus is concerned we'll be dealing with thermal radiations and you know that this thermal radiations or any uh, radiations they are in the form of electromagnetic waves you know that planck's equation e is equal to h nu 
so radiation is the form of energy it gets transmitted or emitted in the form of electromagnetic waves now if i talk exclusively about thermal radiations so thermal radiations are emitted in the form of electromagnetic waves all thermal radiations now thermal radiations most of the thermal radiations lie in the range of 0.1 micrometer to 10 micrometer if you are preparing for objective exam like gate or ies this question is common what is the wavelength range for thermal radiations so the wavelength range for thermal radiations is 0.1 micrometer you might be knowing that micro nano am strong okay i will just clear 10 raised to minus 6 is micro 10 raised to minus 9 is nano 10 raised to minus 10 is am strong right okay anyway so thermal radiations lie in the range of 0.1 micrometer to 10 micrometer if you talk about visible light the visible light falls in the range of 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer i will show you a picture from that picture it will be clear to you right you have to remember these two values these two values like first value is thermal radiation wavelength range and second is visible light wavelength range so what is the wavelength range for thermal radiation it is 0.1 micrometer to 10 micrometer what is the wavelength range for visible light it is 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer okay so it is continuous spectrum of all wavelengths even if i have mentioned 0.1 micrometer to 10 micrometer it means that almost 99.99% falls in this range it doesn't mean that 100% of the thermal radiations fall in this range but almost all fall in this range okay now already we have discussed that radiation does not require any material medium radiation can transfer that electromagnetic waves they can propagate through vacuum also now this is not in your syllabus but as a engineer you must know uh, these are the wavelength range ranges the lowest wavelength range is for gamma rays and uh, in ascending order the wavelength range will go on increasing see one concept you have to understand like uh, wavelength of gamma rays will be lowest and wavelength of radio waves will be highest right wavelength of x rays will be higher than that of gamma rays right so this is what you have to understand second thing what you have to understand is that lower is the wavelength higher is the frequency e is equal to h nu right lower is the wavelength higher is the frequency lambda into t is equal to constant means lambda if it is lower t will be higher right if okay anyway afterwards we'll discuss that okay so this is not in your syllabus but as an engineer you must know for competitive exams this questions may, might be there so again this is regarding wavelength now this is also not in your syllabus but as an engineer you must know that wavelength range for visit visible spectrum is from 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer so this is the spectrum for solar radiation this is the spectrum of solar radiation now see out of the solar radiations only 40 per, 4% of the radiations are visible 7% of the radiations are ultraviolet 37% of the radiations are nearly infrared 11% of the radiations are far infrared so this is solar spectrum afterwards you are if you are going in the field of solar like uh, solar cooker or anything photovoltaic cells uh, n number of things are there uh, you might be knowing that uh, whatever energy we are receiving from sun even if we can harness 3% of that energy we would not need any any other fossil fuels or like uh, coal or petrol or diesel even if we are in a position to harness just 3% of whatever energy we are receiving from sun so solar spectrum is very important that's why i have included this slide it is not in your syllabus but you must know that the wavelength range for visible spectrum is 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer this is the spectrum for earth average temperature of earth generally it is considered that 288 kelvin or at some of the locations it is also considered as 300 kelvin so this is the spectrum for earth okay Uh, second important concept is uh, if you go for research papers solar radiations they are also called as short wave as the temperature is high, is high wavelength is short so solar radiations they are also called as short wave radiations and ambient or uh, these radiations given by earth which are also called as terrestrial radiations they are also called as longer wavelength radiations right okay 
now this concept already you might have studied in 11th standard absorptivity transmittivity reflectivity let's take a very simple example let's say that q is the amount of energy incident or at your home right out of which or any object let's say q is the amount of energy incident on a object let's say a tree is there or any object is there a glass window is there out of which q a is the amount which is absorbed q t is the amount which is transmitted and q r is the amount which is reflected so four factors or four mathematical terms we have discussed one is q second is q a third is q t and fourth is q r what is q the energy incident on an object q a is the energy absorbed by the object q t is the energy transmitted by the object and q r is the energy reflected by the object now what is absorptivity or let's take ma uh, mathematical figures let's say 100 watts is the energy incident on an object out of which 20 watts is absorbed 30 watts is transmitted and remaining 50 watts is reflected so what will be absorptivity absorptivity is defined as the fraction of total energy incident on a surface or object which is absorbed so alpha is equal to qa upon q alpha is equal to qa upon q so absorptivity is the fraction of total energy incident on a object which is absorbed what is transmittivity it is defined as the fraction of total energy incident on an object which is transmitted transmittivity is denoted by the symbol tau tau is equal to qt upon q then the third concept is reflectivity it is denoted by gamma gamma is equal to qr upon q what is qr qr is the amount of energy which is reflected by the object so i think these three terms are clear to you alpha is qa upon q that is absorptivity is nothing but energy absorbed divided by energy incident transmittivity is equal to energy transmitted divided by energy incident reflectivity is equal to energy reflected divided by energy incident now if i am let's say 100 watt is the energy which is incident on an object right so 20 is absorbed 30 is transmitted and 50 is reflected so simple mathematics is there law of conservation of energy is there 100 will be equal to 20 plus 30 plus 50 so q is equal to qa plus qt plus qr right now if you divide this equation by q the equation will be q upon q is equal to qa upon q plus qt upon q plus qr upon q now what is this qa upon q it is nothing but alpha what is this qt upon q it is nothing but tau what is this qr upon q it is nothing but gamma so we can say that the summation of absorptivity transmittivity and reflectivity is unity i repeat the summation of absorptivity transmittivity and reflectivity is unity alpha plus tau plus gamma is equal to 1 i think it is clear to you now we have seen the concept of black body black body is called as the body which absorbs all incident radiations for black body alpha will be equal to 1 because qa will be equal to q if these two terms are same alpha will be equal to 1 is it clear to you white body is the body which reflects all incident radiations for white body qr is equal to q this qr and q they are same so gamma is equal to 1 for white surface for a white body alpha is 1 for black body or a black surface if you talk about opaque surface opaque surface is the surface which does not allow any radiations to pass through it so transmittivity will be zero for opaque surface so if i talk about opaque surface transmittivity is zero so in this equation if i substitute tau is equal to zero what this equation will be alpha plus gamma is equal to 1 so for opaque surfaces the equation used is alpha plus gamma is equal to 1 is it clear to all of you we have seen the concept of absorptivity transmittivity reflectivity white body black body and opaque body right for black body absorptivity is 1 for white body reflectivity is 1 and for opaque body or opaque surface transmittivity is 0 so alpha plus gamma is 1
so already we have discussed this black surface white surface and opaque surface now already you have seen these four definitions we will just have a revision of these definitions maybe in 11 standard we have you might have seen these definitions emissive power so what is emissive power it is defined as the emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature you might be knowing that emissive power is a function of temperature higher is the temperature higher is the emissive power now it is radiant flux radiant energy per unit area so its unit is watts per meter square i repeat emissive power is defined as the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature it is given in watts per meter square is it clear to all of you now next is monochromatic emissive power in some of the reference books monochromatic word is also replaced by spectral spectral emissive power but in your syllabus the word is only monochromatic right monochromatic emissive power what is monochromatic emissive power it is defined as the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature for a specific wavelength now here not only we are considering temperature but also we are considering the wavelength is it clear to you monochromatic emissive power what is emissive power the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature what is monochromatic emissive power the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature for a specific wavelength now emissive power is denoted by small e monochromatic emissive power or spectral emissive power is denoted by e lambda i think it is clear to you emissive power as well as monochromatic emissive power okay so the next definition is emissivity emissivity is defined as the ratio of emissive power of a surface or a body to emissive power of a perfectly black body at the same temperature i repeat emissivity is defined as the ratio of emissive power of a surface to emissive power of a perfectly black surface at the same temperature right the range of emissivity is 0 to 1 right for black body emissivity will be 1 right the range of emissivity is in between 0 to 1 as it is a ratio of similar quantities it is a dimensionless quantity or it is a unitless quantity i repeat emissivity is defined as the ratio of emissive power of a body or emissive power of a surface to emissive power of a perfectly black surface at the same temperature the range of emissivity is 0 to 1 for a perfectly black body which is hypothetical concept emissivity is 1 right uh, if emissivity is approaching 1 that body is called as black body for example for ice the emissivity is 0.97 right so it is called as black body so analytically or even if you go experimentally you will find no object in the universal which is having value of epsilon as 1 right so perfectly black body is a theoretical concept but there are some devices right there is some concept using which we can achieve emissivity very close to 1 and that theoretical body is called as perfectly black body okay the next definition is monochromatic emissivity now here the word is monochromatic being emissivity it is the ratio of emissive power of a body to emissive power of a black body now it is monochromatic emissivity so it is the ratio of monochromatic emissive power of a body to monochromatic emissive power of a perfectly black body at the same temperature intentionally i have not written these definitions because already you have gone through these four definitions but from exam perspective these definitions are very important right in competitive exams there is common question that what is monochromatic emissivity of black body or the question is like the values of emissivity and monochromatic emissivity for a black body are and they will give values like uh, 0 and 0 0.5 and 0.7 0.7 and 0.9 1 and 1 so which is correct 1 and 1 for black body emissivity as well as monochromatic emissivity is unity i repeat for black body emissivity as well as monochromatic emissivity is unity now see this is monochromatic emissivity now this is lambda on x axis we have taken wavelength 
on y axis we have taken e lambda and eb lambda what is e lambda lambda means wavelength means monochromatic monochromatic emissive power and eb lambda means monochromatic emissive power of a black body so it is obvious that if you go at any location the monochromatic emissive power of a black body will be higher than that of the real body so this is the inner curve the inner dome is for the real body it is the spectrum of e lambda emissive power of a body monochromatic emissive power of a real body and eb lambda is monochromatic emissive power of a black body the outer dome is for eb lambda i think it is clear to you now at any wavelength let's take lambda plus if i draw a vertical line if i draw a vertical line what is this ab this ab is nothing but e lambda right and what is ac ac is nothing but eb lambda so if i take ab upon ac i will get the values e lambda upon eb lambda which is nothing but epsilon lambda what is this epsilon lambda epsilon means emissivity and lambda means monochromatic monochromatic emissivity is the ratio of emissive monochromatic emissive power of a body to monochromatic emissive power of a perfectly black body at the same temperature and wavelength these words are very important if you miss this word at the same temperature you will get zero marks for your definition or derivation right so it should be at the same temperature now see in iits or in many reference books it is called as monochromatic hemispherical emissivity but in our syllabus in majority of the universities or in, in fact in iits also this word hemispherical is not used but even if it is not used it is assumed to be there it is assumed that whatever radiations a body is emitting they are intercepted by a hemisphere sphere so that emissive power is actually called as emissive hemispherical power or hemispherical emissive power but generally we use the convention as emissive power that hemispherical word is not there right so even if in any competitive exam this word hemispherical is there you need not get confused monochromatic emissivity and monochromatic hemispherical emittivity it is one and the same i think it is clear to you so what is monochromatic emissivity what is emissivity emissivity is the ratio of emissive power of a body to emissive power of a black body and what is monochromatic emissivity it is the ratio of monochromatic emissive power of a body to monochromatic emissive power of a perfectly black body at the same temperature okay is it clear to you okay now the next concept is real surface and gray surface now if we plot wavelength versus monochromatic emissivity actually we get this kind of curve you know that for all surfaces the emissivity or monochromatic emissivity will always lie between 0 to 1 in real we get this kind of curve a fluctuating nature is there right so the value of monochromatic emissivity fluctuates with respect to wavelength but for calculation purpose we draw a mean we draw we take an average and we draw a horizontal line now that horizontal line is called as or that concept is called as gray surface actually the monochromatic wavelength is monochromatic emissivity is varying with respect to wavelength but ideally or theoretically we assume that it is constant right that assumption is called as gray surface so how can we define gray surface gray surface is defined as the surface which is having constant value of monochromatic emissivity irrespective of the wavelength gray surface is defined as the surface which has same value of wavelength sorry same value of monochromatic emissivity which will not vary with respect to wavelength and what is real surface actually all surfaces are real surfaces the value of monochromatic emissivity will vary with respect to wavelength so is it clear to you at the time of orals commonly this question is there what is black surface what is white surface and what is gray surface generally students are able to answer black and white surface what is black surface the surface which absorbs all incident radiations what is white surface the surface which reflects all incident radiations what is gray surface gray surface is the surface which has same value of monochromatic emissivity or constant value of monochromatic emissivity which will not vary with respect to wavelength the surface which has constant value of monochromatic emissivity is called as gray surface it is an imaginary concept right it is just uh, what we can say an approximation 
right it is an assumption okay now there are four laws of radiation right already you might have heard these four names one is kirchhoff's law second is stephen boltzmann's law third is planck's law and last one is wen's law we'll just see these four laws and then we'll stop right so stephen boltzmann's law already we have seen what is stephen boltzmann's law it states that the emissive power of a black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature right anyway we'll go in sequence so just remember that there are four laws governing radiation there are four laws governing radiation they are first one is kirchhoff's law second is stephen boltzmann's law third is planck's law and fourth is wen's displacement law which is also called as wen's law so we'll see first law that is kirchhoff's law it is very simple it is alpha is equal to epsilon what is alpha absorptivity epsilon is emissivity alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda okay anyway we'll see the concept the first thing is that materials which are strong emitters right they are also strong absorbers materials that are strong emitters at a particular wavelength are also strong absorbers at that wavelength i repeat materials that are strong emitters at a specific or particular wavelength they are also strong absorbers at that wavelength kirchhoff's law states that the absorptivity of a substance for radiation of a specific wavelength is equal to its emissivity for the same wavelength and it is given by the equation alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda kirchhoff's law is very simple alpha is equal to epsilon absorptivity is equal to emissivity for a specific wavelength i believe this is clear to you this law already we have seen the statement of this law already we have seen stephen boltzmann's law it states that the in intensity of radiation emitted by a radiating black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature right now remember that this law is for black body right in some of the exams this question may be there that stephen boltzmann's law can be applied for it is for black body but from that black body by working out radiations emitted by black body we can also work out emissions radiated by a general body using the concept of emissivity for a black body qb is equal to sigma a t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 for a general body we will just multiply this equation by epsilon which is nothing but emissivity that we'll see while we will work out with numericals right but remember that stephen boltzmann's law is for black body so it states that emissive power of a black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature now we'll talk about planck's law it describes the amount of radiation emitted by a black body at each wavelength as a function of temperature see basically planck studied the spectral distribution for a black body initially i will show you that spectral distribution this is the spectral distribution which planck has studied he plotted on x axis he plotted lambda lambda is nothing but wavelength in micrometer right versus eb lambda right for a specific temperature now this inner curve is for temperature 800 kelvin this middle curve is for temperature 2000 kelvin and the outermost curve is for temperature 8000 sorry 5800 kelvin do you know why it is 5800 it is the temperature of sun temperature of sun is 5800 kelvin anyway so he draw lambda versus eb lambda what is lambda lambda is wavelength what is eb lambda monochromatic emissive power of a black body monochromatic emissive power of a black body so planck studied the distribution of wavelength against monochromatic emissive power of a black body for constant temperatures he got this kind of spectral distributions so from this what were his observations his observe they, he has noted three observations which are those firstly at a space, constant temperature let's take any any curve let's take a curve of 800 or 2000 or 5800 let's take example of 800 kelvin this curve for for a constant temperature as the wavelength increases the monochromatic 
emissive power of a black body increases it attains a maxima and then it decreases the same is applied to this temperature also at 3000 also what will happen as the wavelength increases the monochromatic emissive power of a black body will increase it will attain a maxima and then it will decrease then it will fall right so this was the first conclusion that he has drawn planck drawn this as the first conclusion okay what is the second conclusion he has drawn at a particular lambda at a particular wavelength eb lambda increases with t at a particular lambda you take any lambda let's take this lambda so for this lambda if i draw a vertical line over here it will intersect these three curves right it will intersect the innermost curve over here the middle one over here and the topmost curve over here for any constant lambda as the temperature increases the monochromatic emissive power of a black body will increase for any constant lambda with increase in t eb lambda will increase i think it is clear to you so this was the second conclusion that he has drawn and what is the third conclusion he has drawn the maximum value of eb lambda right is observed at smaller wavelength if you talk about this peak you can just see this peak for innermost curve this is the peak for middle curve this is the peak for topmost curve this is the peak right now what is this indicates as the temperature is increasing this peak location is shifting on the left side as the temperature increases now this curve is for 5800 kelvin if i draw a curve for a temperature higher than 5800 kelvin the peak right will be observed somewhere on the left side of this peak right planck studied that what is the third conclusion the maximum value of eb lambda is observed at smaller wavelength as temperature increases so these were the three observations of planck and then he derived this equation eb lambda now see eb lambda is equal to 2 pi c1 upon lambda raised to 5 into bracket e raised to c2 upon lambda t minus 1 what is lambda lambda is the wavelength what is t t is the absolute temperature in kelvin c1 and c2 are constants pi is also constant 3.14 eb lambda is monochromatic emissive power of a black body so planck has did experimentation and found the values of c1 and c2 so these are the values of c1 and c2 and these are the three observations that are made by planck now what was wen's contribution wen simply studied planck's distributions right he simply studied planck's distribution and he obtained a equation between lambda m now see this peak location if you plot on x axis this is called as lambda m what is lambda m the wavelength at which emissive power is maximum lambda m doesn't mean maximum wavelength lambda m means lambda m means the wavelength at which emissive power is maximum so when has obtained this equation a simple equation a into b is equal to constant what equation he has obtained lambda m into t if you have studied in 11 standard we can derive this equation starting from this equation from this equation we can derive this equation lambda m into t is equal to 0.0028 what is lambda m it is the wavelength at which emissive power is maximum and what is t t is the absolute temperature so the wavelength of the peak in the spectral curve given by wen's law is this lambda m into t is equal to 0.0028 right so this is wen's displacement law it gives a relation between wavelength corresponding to mono, maximum monochromatic emissive power and absolute temperature tell me is it clear to you lambda m into t is equal to 0.0028 at the time of interviews a common question is there how temperature of sun is measured how temperature of sun is measured we cannot measure temperature of sun there is no thermocouple there is no material which can withstand sun's temperature right sun's temperature is 5800 kelvin 
right at that high temperature every material will melt so what we measure basically we measure lambda m lambda m for the sun is 0.5 micrometer right we can measure the wavelength of solar radiation and from this lambda m we predict temperature of sun sun of temperature sun is the temperature of sun is never measured it is predicted and it is predicted as 5800 kelvin if you go in more details it is 5778 kelvin right previously it was considered as uh, slightly lower but now in modern physics it is considered as 5778 anyway so you must know that temperature of sun is predicted using wen's displacement law is it clear to you now if temperature of earth let's take that for this day the temperature of earth is 300 kelvin now corresponding to this the wavelength will be 10 micrometer tell me is it clear to you so within 2 minutes just we'll revise whatever we have studied in today's lecture uh, in tomorrow's lecture we'll see view factor we'll see what is new things are there these things are already already known to you that's why i have just uh, tried to cover it uh, fastly but in next lecture we'll go slowly because we'll see view factor we'll see electrical analogy of radiation the concepts are new to you right so within 5 minutes i will just revise whatever we have seen in this lecture meantime you please write down your roll numbers in chat box hmm? so we have started with radiation we have seen the applications there are plenty of applications see when i there are hundreds of applications where radiation is used but these are some of the major applications on google if you search for radiation no the first uh, five to six uh, links you will get about cancer treatment radiation cancer treatment right so biomedical use it is also having biomedical use anyway i will not repeat the applications already we have discussed the applications now these are the basic concepts all surfaces solid and liquid surfaces at all temperatures emit radiations except at 0 kelvin right in fact gases surface also emit radiation okay now this emission is governed by stefan boltzmann's law which states that emissive power of a perfectly black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature now emissive power is e and absolute temperature is t so e is proportional to t raised to 4 so e is equal to sigma into t raised to 4 right now what is e e is nothing but qb upon a rate of emission of radiant flux that is rate of emission of radiant energy per unit area qb upon a so this equation becomes qb is equal to sigma a t raised to 4 if we talk about general bodies we will multiply this factor by emissivity so q for any body is epsilon sigma a t raised to 4 even for black body you can write this equation and you will write the value of epsilon as 1 right so for any body just you have to remember only one equation q is equal to epsilon sigma a t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 where we are considering t1 as absolute temperature of first body and t2 is absolute temperature of second body now in this equation q is the rate of heat transfer by radiation now see in heat transfer subject always we will deal with the rate of heat transfer the rate of heat transfer by conduction the rate of heat transfer by convection the rate of heat transfer by radiation in heat exchangers we will design those heat exchangers for desired rate of heat transfer so that the desired temperatures will be achieved right okay now as we have discussed that sigma is a constant that is called as stefan boltzmann's constant 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 i told you that it is by sequence 5678 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 right a is the surface area of the object and t1 and t2 are the absolute temperatures of the object now black body uh, you can google for this what is black body right the word black has nothing to do with color which emits maximum radiations and which absorbs all incident radiations is called as black body then i have told you to memorize these two figures which are those one is the radiation or wavelength range for thermal radiation spectrum that is 0.1 to 10 micrometer and visible light spectrum 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer right and we have studied that radiation doesn't require any media it doesn't require any medium for propagation now this if you are preparing for some competitive exams you can remember this this is the ascending order if you go down the wavelength is increasing
then we have seen the concepts of absorptivity transmittivity and reflectivity the fraction of total energy incident which is absorbed is called as absorptivity which is transmitted is called as transmittivity and which is reflected is called as reflectivity they are denoted by alpha tau and gamma alpha is absorptivity tau is transmittivity and gamma is reflectivity white surface is the surface which will reflect all incident radiation so reflectivity that is gamma for white body will be 1 black body is the body which absorbs all incident radiation so alpha for black body will be 1 for opaque surface transmittivity will be 0 plus therefore alpha plus gamma will be equal to 1 then we have seen these four simple definitions emissive power the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature is called as emissive power at that temperature then next is monochromatic emissive power the rate of emission of radiant flux at a specific temperature for a specific wavelength is called as monochromatic emissive power or, or it is also called as spectral emissive power then we have seen the concept of emissivity it is the ratio of emissive power of a body to emissive power of a perfectly black body and then we have seen the concept of monochromatic emissivity which is the ratio of emissive power of a monochromatic emissive power of a body to monochromatic emissive power of a perfectly black body for the same temperature and wavelength what is gray surface the surf the surface which is having same value of monochromatic emissivity at all wavelengths if epsilon lambda is constant that surface is called as gray surface right see this if epsilon lambda is constant if i consider this horizontal line it is called as gray surface if i consider this fluctuating line it is called as real surface right then we have seen monochromatic emissivity how to calculate monochromatic monochromatic emissivity simply we take ratio of e lambda upon eb lambda ab is nothing but e lambda and ac is nothing but eb lambda what is e lambda monochromatic emissive power what is eb lambda monochromatic emissive power of a black body and at the end we have seen four laws of radiation the laws governing radiation kirchhoff's law simply speaking in mathematical terms it is alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda alpha is absorptivity epsilon is emissivity and lambda is wavelength so kirchhoff's law states that absorptivity of a surface for radiation for a specific wavelength is equal to its emissivity for the same wavelength so alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda Stefan Boltzmann's law already we have seen this that intensity of radiation emitted by a radiating black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature then we have seen planck's law right now there is no statement as such even if you google for the planck's law no there is no statement as such for planck's law only it is given that in uh, many reference books in sengel uh, holman sukhatme in all reference books it is given that it just gives it describes the amount of radiation emitted by a black body right so it is basically derived from the spectrum thermal spectrum right so planck has drawn this thermal spectrum he has drawn lambda that is wavelength versus eb lambda lambda is wavelength eb lambda is monochromatic emissive power of a black body and he has got this kind of curves so what were his observations if you talk about any curve any curve is for a constant temperature so the emissive power or monochromatic emissive power of a black body remember that planck's law is also for black body it is not for general bodies it is for black body at constant temperature as the wavelength increases the monochromatic emissive power of a black surface increases it attains a maxima and then it decreases this was the first observation of planck what is the first observation for a constant temperature as the wavelength increases the monochromatic emissive power of a black surface increases attains a maxima and then decreases what was the second observation for a constant wavelength if i take any wavelength let's take this wavelength and if i draw a vertical line as the temperature increases the value of monochromatic emissive power of a black body that will increases for a constant lambda with increasing t eb lambda will increase and what was the third observation of the planck that these peaks shift towards left side and this was mathematically described by wens and that's why that law is called as wens displacement law simply wens what has observed this lambda m the location at which maximum emissive power is obtained shifts on the left side 
that is it is inversely proportional to t so simply he wrote equation that lambda m is proportional to 1 upon t right so lambda m is equal to constant upon t so lambda m into t is equal to constant and that lambda m into t is equal to constant is called as wentz displacement law so is the planck's law clear to you okay now this is mathematical form of planck's law in this equation eb lambda is equal to 2 pi c1 upon lambda raised to 5u into bracket e raised to c2 upon lambda t minus 1 c1 and c2 are constants pi is also constant lambda is the wavelength in meters and t is the absolute temperature in kelvin eb lambda is the monochromatic emissive power of a black body and this is wentz displacement law it gives the relation simply it it is written as lambda m is proportional to 1 upon t the wavelength at which maximum emissive power is obtained is inversely proportional to absolute temperature this is the statement of wentz law lambda m is proportional to 1 upon t so lambda m is equal to constant upon t so lambda m into t is equal to constant and wen has calculated this constant and he has observed that this constant is 0.0028 right from wentz law we can predict temperature of the sun or also we can measure wavelength of the radiations which are emitted by the earth okay is it clear to you so if you are having any questions then you can write in the chat box or else we'll stop in tomorrow's lecture we'll start with the new topic that is view factor right okay thank you thank you very much after writing your roll number you can leave the meeting Mallar and Tushar, you can leave the meeting. Just write your roll numbers, and then you can leave. Tushar. Hello, Tushar. Can you hear me? हेलो 